So I identify myself as a cyborg because I have a new sense in my body that it's created by cybernetics. So since 2013, my body is connected to online seismographs that allows me to perceive the seismic activity of the planet through vibrations in my body. So I have a couple of implants on my feet that allows me to, yeah, to, to feel all the earthquakes from one in Richter scale. So now I'm in Newcastle, but if there's an earthquake in Japan or in California or in Greece, I would feel a vibration inside my body. And depending on the intensity of the earthquake, the vibration I feel is stronger or less strong. So at the beginning, I had to get used to feeling all these vibrations constantly every day in, in my body. But after a while, uh, after feeling all these vibrations that became emotion and then an emotion, it's when I felt that I had a new sense uh, in my body, what I call the seismic sense, the sense of feeling the seismic activity of the, pla of the planet in real time. Uh, so Earth, I think it doesn't work. <laughs> Where should I point? Is this one? It should be that one. Maybe I can do it through the computer? No, this is no, a, a different one. Mm. Hello, Sage crew. Now. Oh, right. Fantastic. <clears throat> so Earth, uh, well, the tectonic plates, uh, well, you see, like, we usually see the map of the, of the world through the lines of the continents. But after, under the lines of the, con the continents are the tectonic plates that are constantly moving. They're constantly alive. The, 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 the tectonic plates are also evolving and releasing and creating tension and creating earthquakes. Earthquakes have always existed and they're part of our nature, but they're still a very mysterious phenomenon. Um, I'm a dancer. I was studying dance and choreography in college and also movement researcher, like experiencing movement in other ways. And when I was studying dance in college, actually in, in England, in Devon, uh, I, w I was in a very experimental school that um, uh, we were encouraged to use technology in our dance pieces. But also, um, I always thought that technology itself, it was very, very distant and cold feeling and very unnatural. So in order to make technology more natural in my performance, I realized that instead of using technology as a tool, if I use technology as part of, our, of the dancer uh, and the artist, it would be, become more natural. And also one of my, my aims is to perceive all this imperceptible movement that happens around us. There's many things that move around us that we cannot perceive through our natural senses. So my aim to, was to experience all these imperceptible movements uh, around me. First, I started the project by detecting the speed. I would have like a pair of earrings detecting the speed of people walking in front of me. Then I had some sensors on my earrings that would allow me to to detect the presence of, like, I would, uh, I would know if someone was getting closer to me from behind. And then after experiencing all this movement uh, around me, I realized that the Earth is constantly moving, not only rotates by itself and around the sun, but it also shakes constantly through, through earthquakes. And this is when I created the, the seismic sense. So now I have this couple of implants on my feet that is connected to online seismographs and allows me to feel the seismicity of the planet. So now after experiencing all the earthquakes uh, for, a, for a long time, I, I realize a good way to describe it is that I feel like I have two heartbeats now, like the, my heartbeat and then the earthbeat, having its own rhythm also inside my body. First, at the beginning, I had to get used to feeling all these vibrations, but maybe at the beginning I would like wake up in the middle of the night, it was a big earthquake, but now I'm just like used to it. Or maybe I would, uh, if I was talking, I would like stop talking because I could feel all, the, all these vibrations, but now are part of, of my perception. Uh, and I see this as cyborg art. So I feel like now artists no longer need to use technology as a tool. We can use technology as part of our body and change our perception of reality. So. And so I would say that the seismic sense is my artwork. So, uh, so I guess the, uh, the artwork of a cyborg artist would be the creation of this new sense. So the seismic sense is my artwork, but it's an artwork that happens inside my body. So I'm also like the only one in the audience. So in cyborg art, the artwork, the audience, and the space where it happens, it's all inside the body. 
So in order to share what I feel, so in CyberCard would be maybe a good comparison with a, with a photography. First, like the photographer that takes the picture, he sees the picture through the camera, and then he decides how to reveal this picture, if he modifies it or if he reveals it at all. So I guess in CyberCard it's a bit the same. I experience the art, and then I decide how to share, how to reveal this art. And I have some ways of, of sharing this art. One is... Uh, they can be uh, so one one of the pieces it's called waiting for earthquakes where it's like a, it's like a waiting room where the audience and I just wait for a, for an earthquake to take place so it's it's a piece based on real time and can it can last 10 minutes or it can last hours and hours and whenever there's an earthquake I move according to the intensity of the earthquake so if there are no earthquakes during the performance there's no dance and some festivals are very worried about this, but, but uh, <laughs> there's always some kind of uh, seismic activity. So uh, in this case, it's a bit like a duet between the Earth and myself. Basically, the Earth is, is the choreographer of the piece, and I'm just interpreting the data that she gives me. Another way that I have to do this, it's through percussion, what I call seismic percussion, where the rhythm of the piece is based on the rhythm of the tectonic plates. So in this case, Earth is the composer of the piece. And I have two ways of doing this. One is <clears throat> to play in real time, so whenever there's an earthquake anywhere in the planet, I play the drum, but I also create some scores based on the intensity of, of the seismic density, uh, intensity of the, on a specific place. For example, the first one I did it was in Mexico, and I researched all the earthquakes that, ha that have happened in Mexico in the last 50 years, and I played them all together in 10 minutes, so the people from Mexico could hear how their, con how their country had been moving in the last 50 years. So in this case, yeah, Earth is like the composer of, of the piece. In 2010, I co-founded the Cyber Foundation with my colleague Neil Harbison and my childhood friend. And basically, we, we found it with three, with three aims. Uh, one is to help humans to become cyborgs. The other one is to promote cyborg art. And the third one is to defend the cyborg rights, to defend the right of designing yourself. Um, also, apart from uh, all these uh, words of of cyborg, that cyborg is a cybernetic organism that actually it was created to define peoples that modify themselves in order to survive in other environments. So they, they, they created this word to define humans that had to modify themselves in order to survive in space, but we took this word and we think that we should modify ourselves in order to understand better the planet. After using this a bit more, we also feel that uh, I identify myself as a trans species because I have a new sense and a new body part that is no longer defined as a human sense and a, hu and a human body part. And after using this, actually last, last December, I co-founded the Transpicious Society with Neil and, and Manel, another two, two cyborg artists. Uh, and it's a society, it's like, a com it's like the social project of a Cyber Foundation. It's a community that gives voice to people that don't uh, identify 100% as humans. And we also do, we have a street in Barcelona and we create a sense lab, uh, uh, a lab where create, we, we create new sensors and we do events related to, to this. I like this, um, I want to show this logo because actually it really defines our idea of how we see the transpicious. We feel that humans, we are not like a closed circle, we are open circle because actually we feel that we haven't always been human. We used to be a bacteria, then we were on the sea, then we were in the trees, and then we became humans, and now we become something else. So we see actually the evolution of humans as a, as a natural thing, that we shouldn't be scared of evolving, like maybe being human is not that great either, so we shouldn't be scared of not being 100% human anymore. We feel this, it's a natural evolution, that we are an open circle and that we can decide how we want to, how we want to evolve. We, we no longer need to wait for natural evolution. We can decide how we want to be and what senses and body parts we want to have. This is my friend Neil, I don't know if you've seen him around. He has this antenna and he also feels transpicious because he's more obvious that he has this new body part that is no longer a human body part, it's more of um, an, anim an animal body part. No? 
And actually his antenna, I'll, I'll tell you, is like he transforms colors into sound. So he's, for him, color as sounds. Through, uh, this antenna transforms the, the frequency of color of the light through vibrations in his skull, and then he's able to hear the sound. He's also a cyborg artist. Another project that we did in the Cyber Foundation, actually this <clears throat> is a funny one. We went to Brazil and we had like a week to present something, and Neil and I have uh, bad teeth, and we, I have uh, one tooth missing, missing, and he has two. So we, wanted, we didn't want to have a, a normal tooth, so we, we decided to have a, 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 some tooth that we were able to communicate to each other. So actually, we did a, a, had a, a tooth that whenever I click, he would feel a vibration, and whenever he clicked, I would feel a vibration. So we are able to communicate through each other, because actually we both know the Morse code, so by the rhythm of our clicking, we are able to send each other words. And we call this the transcendental communication system, because we, we communicate to each other from tooth to tooth. And, and actually, it's a, it's a communication that could work for people that cannot move at all. Also, a uh, communication system that could work in space, because you don't need air to communicate to each other. And now, a way that we show this with a little performance, where we, we were sitting at the edge of, the, of each table by facing, facing back to each other, and uh, the audience would write a word, and then I would by clicking, send it to Neil, and then Neil would write the word, and then we were able to communicate to, to each other. Actually, this, this tooth worked as a, with a Bluetooth system, so it was actually Bluetooth tooth. <laughs> <coughs> and Neil had another space. He has very bad teeth, so he had another tooth missing, so we, we created a, a tooth that created light. So whenever he clicked it, he could have light inside himself. Um, another, another sense that we're working in the transfer society is a sense that to feel the quality of air. So this is a, a boy who wanted to have this sense, so it, uh, to know if the, the air is very, is, is very polluted or not. Uh, this is another project we did in a, in a workshop that actually this, uh, this part of the body is called solar plexum, and this was a prototype to feel the heat of the sun, because the heat of the sun changes. This is my project to feel presence behind me. It's actually a sense that we give to cars, but actually we don't feel if someone is getting very close, but cars can. This is Manel, the, um, my friend that we also co-founded the Transpeace Society, and he actually has some barometric ears, so he can feel the, the change of the atmospheric pressure by vibrations in his ears. So if you, if you know the changes of atmospheric pressure, you, you're able to know if it's gonna rain or not. So he's actually the weatherman. He feels the weather in his ears. Yeah, so uh, these are just some of the projects that we are working on. And I feel also like, actually that I identify now as a, as a cyborg, I don't feel closer to robots or to machines. I feel closer to nature and to earth because it's very different to know that the Earth is moving than actually to feel that the Earth is moving. And also I feel closer to other animals because I can relate how they perceive reality in another way. So I feel like sometimes we don't need to think about science fiction or something, or something that is unnatural. Actually, if we take a look at nature, we can get very inspired. For example, some animals can, can fly, some animals can create light by themselves, some animals can perceive ultraviolet, infrared, ultrasound. So they, uh, there are many, and, and actually mortality already exists in nature because there's a jellyfish that never dies. So I think we uh, can get very inspired by other animals. <clears throat> also what we feel that we do is reveal reality. Like there's many things that happen around us, but our senses don't allow us to perceive. And if we add new senses, we can experience reality in a deeper way. We don't think that we do virtual reality or mental reality. We think that we do our art, like real reality or reveal reality. Because through these new senses, we reveal a reality that exists, but we cannot perceive. Um, yeah, I feel like also by hundreds and hundreds of years, Humans have been changing the planet in order to live more comfortable, but maybe now has, become, has arrived the time that we are able to, that we should change ourselves in order to adapt better to the planet we live in. For example, it's, it's daylight outside, but we're using artificial light because without artificial light, we're able 
we are unable to see each other. If we all had night vision like other animals have, during the night uh, we, didn't, we wouldn't need to turn on our, the lights and then our planet would be more, we wouldn't be wasting so much energy. If we would use our internal heating instead of air conditioning or heaters, we wouldn't be uh, wasting so much electri electricity and damaging our planet so much. So maybe it's time to, to change ourselves in order to live more according to the planet. Also, my current project now is to, we have this new term that it's called sense turnout. Is if we use internet as a new sense, we can experience things that are very far from where we are. We can feel things that are happening in the other side of the planet, but also outside space. So we feel that we no longer need to go to become a sentient and we no longer need to go physically on space in order to explore it. We can remain on Earth and have a new sense that explores space while we are here, and we call this to be a sentient. So now my project is to have uh, these implants to connect to the moon quakes, to the seismic activity of the moon. So this will allow me to be physically on Earth, but having my feet on the moon and be two, two places in, in one time. And just to finish, I think that we are the ones who need to make sure that the union between technology and humans has a positive outcome and it brings you closer to nature, to other animals and to space. Thank you.